Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and the tweet that you are looking at right now might be more significant than some people out there think. Um, this is from David Schwartz from Ripple, the CTO of Ripple, one of the creators of the XRP Ledger, and he says, today was a good day. Now on the surface, that just might be like, okay, he's joking or whatever, uh, trying to tweak Twitter, which he often does. But this is a very specific reference. This, today was a good day, is a reference right back to this tweet. Brad Garlinghouse, today was a good day on April 6th, 2021. I don't think there's any question about this one. What happened on April 6th? Well, April 6th was the hearing that went really well for Ripple. It was the hearing where Ripple's attorney, or Brad Garlinghouse's attorney, Matthew Solomon, came out and said, and said he believes it could be game over for the whole case if the defense finds information, uh, information suggesting the SEC thinks or thought XRP was akin to Bitcoin or Ethereum, which would be outside the scope of the SEC. So, Brad Garlinghouse said today was a good day in reference to how well that hearing went. And in the meantime, they've been doing discovery on those things. And the judge actually went back, as I recall, told the SEC, yes, you've got to provide this information. And so when I hear David Schwartz say today was a good day in reference to Brad Garlinghouse's tweet about today was a good day, which is in reference to it might being uh, the case uh, this moment if they find anything where XRP was being compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum by the SEC, it would be game over for the whole case. That's what I'm thinking about right here. That has me exciting. Here's what else has me excited. This is just a joke right here. This crypto bit lord is speaking of tweakers. He's great at tweaking social media, but he tweeted this out, I'm sure, to tweak and get a reaction. Well, as long as he mentioned XRP and Elon Musk, I thought I'd show it. Elon Musk is buying XRP and he has no evidence of that, but that's okay. Uh, I believe, I've always believed Elon Musk knows all about XRP and XLM and I, th I think DM as well. I think that I I've always felt like SpaceX and Elon Musk and all those X PayPal guys, and we've proven it here. They are invested in Stellar and Ripple these guys are connected to this whole thing. I'm just telling you, I've, I've seen enough. Now, look what we have. We have a surging XRP this morning, folks. This thing just went up as high as 54 cents, I believe. Let me see. We've been as high as 153 uh, this morning. Here's what everybody is saying. Dark, Dark Defender says, Dear XR, Dear's XRP is pricing in the same area. Range between a dollar thirteen and a dollar sixty six are still the main lines. Whatever happens, both up or down, technically all time high is in the target. I today wanted to explain two two dollars and seventy two cents target. Perseverance will prevail. Enjoy your weekend. And then um, Crypto Wizard uh, closed bullish as expected. So did XRP. Um, it's, and then he goes on above a dollar forty eight. XRP will push towards $1.95. I will be looking for a quick scalp on intraday chart. Then Crypto Bull says, remember the XRP triangles I talked about? And he's basically showing us that there's a breakout of that. Then he says, XRP is flying now. That sounds like a thumbnail. Okay, I was digging around a little this morning and I, as I like to do sometimes on Saturday and Sunday mornings to find old uh, videos of the SEC people contradicting themselves. And here's one. What you're looking at, first you're going to see William Hinman, who's the guy that walked to the podium in 2018 to say that, in his opinion, Ethereum is not a security. This is his senior advisor, Valerie Shapenik. I don't know how to say that. This is his senior advisor. So in other words, she's the one that was advising him on how to handle the Ethereum thing. 
And so I said, if I were a Ripple attorney, I would want to see the communications between her and Hinman and how on God's green earth they rationalize giving Ethereum a free pass. Who are these people kidding? Now watch all the way to the end because at the end, you're going to hear from Gary Gensler. And today that team is headed by Val Sapanik, who is a, a senior advisor to me for all of the uh, fintech work that we are doing. Uh, and she has uh, over five years experience in excuse me, in this particular area and over 20 years experience at the SEC, very seasoned, very well known in the um, digital asset community, and I think highly regarded and um, a, a terrific person to help us focus uh, our efforts across all the divisions. I'm So the basic test is uh, when folks contribute something of value to a common enterprise with a reasonable expectation that they will profit based on the efforts of others, and these are the significant managerial or entrepreneurial efforts of others. And many times when you see uh, tokens issued on a blockchain, it really is um, promoters of an enterprise trying to raise capital to fund whatever project they have, to build the enterprise, to make it profitable, whether that's to build the network or complete a blockchain or uh, involve other participants into the network to make that token valuable over time. Um, these are the kinds of things that we have to look at to de determine whether or not something's a security. So if it fits these characteristics, essentially, we're looking at it like it is a security. Um, I, think, I think the chairman pointed out that many of the ICOs he, ha he has seen have the characteristics of securities. I think that's the case. I've looked at many, many of these things myself. Um, and I think it's a rare circumstance where, you're, where, where you don't have an enterprise kind of getting started issuing tokens that aren't issuing securities. So Ethereum started with a pre-sale and an ICO, which we'll be talking about, about 72 million Ethereum. Vitalik wanted to raise money. He was maybe 19 years old. He looped in with a venture capitalist from Canada, Joe Lubin, who now runs uh, Consensus. Uh, Lubin took about 10% or 9.5% of the offering. They put 9.5% in a foundation called the Ethereum Foundation, and the other 80% was sold to the public for $18 million. So there you have it. There is no getting around that. There's no getting around the absurdity of it. There's no getting around how awful this stinks. There's no way to explain your way out of this joke of a situation that the SEC has put itself in. And those guys, I guess luckily for anybody who's standing on the side of right, William Hinman and Jay Clayton are going to, I think that, that this, um, the petition yesterday that was signed, that they, everybody signed um, to, to have an investigation, I'm hoping that that has some kind of uh, legal merit where, where he has to investigate them. Um, but who knows? I mean, shoot, you don't ever know what's going on. Crypto Dim um, sent me this. Now, this is a video uh, from Bank XRP. This is a video about the Crypto Climate Accord. It, you, the writing is on the wall. You can see this plain as day where all this is going. The accord, inspired by the Paris Climate Agreement, is a private sector-led initiative for the entire crypto community focused on decarbonizing the cryptocurrency industry in record time. And this is the website of the Crypto Climate Accord. And as you go down, you will see who all is a part of it. There is Ripple right there. You will also see, if you remember, if you go, let's see, if you go to read the Accord, look at this, Energy Web. Well, that sounded familiar to me. Energy Web is, um, is right here. Energy Web. This is a Ripple announcement. We are proud to, to join the Crypto Climate Accord alongside Energy Web and all those achieving sustainability in, crypt, in cryptocurrency. And then, here's the Bank for International Settlement. Save the date. The, on 2nd to the 4th, the Green Swan 2021, Coordinating Finance on Climate. I mean, if you can't see this right in front of your eyes, I don't know what else to do. We can draw you pictures. We talk about my son drawing you pictures all the time. Then there's this from XRP Vet. Check this out. This guy wrote an interesting little thread. He says, in the next two weeks, Ripple will settle the SC with the SEC. In June, Flare Networks will be launched and the Bank of International Settlement, together with the central banks, will discuss a future more inclusive and greener global financial system under the slogan Green Swan. After Corona, 
at that at about the same time as the G7 meeting, which aims in the sa same direction, we all, we will all witness how the FUD around XRP will clear within a few weeks, and the whole story behind all the years of dense fog will be told. Laugh as long and as hard as you like. I don't care. I, I know, and you will be surprised how a sentiment can suddenly change and turn into a new reality. Cryptocurrencies cannot be regulated. Woo, wait and see how the world is changing. What an incredibly exciting time we live in. And then he says, some think there will be no settlement because Ripple needs clarity, and I don't see it that way. Congress is working on new legislation. Clarity will come from that legislation. A trial in the middle of that of that based on, an, on old regulations is out of the question given the weakness of the case. On the contrary, a judgment based on the old legislation would create even more ambiguity, 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 sorry. Folks, let me tell you, this thing keeps on happening to me. Let me tell you something, folks. What this guy is saying in this thread makes a whole lot of sense. Now, I'm not saying it'll, ha it'll happen in that exact way, and I'm not saying that all of those things will happen, but an, a settlement does make sense to me. And after that David Schwartz tweet, let me tell you what, that tweet, I think, is means more than than meets the eye. I really do. Okay, now uh, let me finish here. Riz XRP, this is a great tweet by Tika Tori. Remember, Tika Tori was the guy who did the uh, who did the great cryptocurrency conspiracy and showed how Goldman Sachs and all these companies were buying Bitcoin while they were bashing it and all that stuff to drive the prices down. Um, he's, he did that with Glenn Beck. I've shown that before, but look at what he says here. I've never sugarcoated what's involved in owning crypto. It's a volatile asset. Think about this statistic. There are 5 billion internet users, only, but only 100 million crypto users. So we're nowhere near the end of crypto adoption cycle, not even close. We didn't hit 100 million internet users until sometime in early 1998, and yet here we are still getting rich from internet stocks 24 years later. When you're, a, when you're in a massive trend early, even if you have horrible timing, the power of the trend will bail you out. Say you have a terrible timing three years ago and bought Bitcoin at $20,000 in 2017, only to watch it drop all the way down to 3,800 in 2018. Today it's around 50K. It took three years for Bitcoin to come back. That means even with bad timing, you'd still have a 40% annual growth. Long story short, if you're, if you're early enough, and we still are, even bad timing doesn't matter all that much. And that's where I want you to focus. For those of you who are just coming into crypto or thinking about coming into crypto, understand that volatility is the price we pay, but it's worth it and the chance to make life-changing gains. He is so right here, folks. And let me tell you what, there is no, there is not one, I don't care which one you name, there is no more of a coiled spring in digital assets than XRP. It is XRP, if there's any digital asset in this entire space that is a coiled spring, it is XRP. With this SEC lawsuit, I have never ever, as long as I've owned XRP, which is since 2013-14, I've never felt more optimistic about what could happen at any minute. I mean, you could literally have this all go away at any minute and the, anybody who doesn't anybody who doesn't own it when that happens man you talking about losing out on an opportunity and I'm no financial advisor and I'm not telling anybody to buy it I'm just telling you that I have <laughs> I've been, I've been buying for years now and I I'll tell you what this, I've never ever not not one time in the whole time I've been doing these videos have I ever been just been salivating at what I think is about to come. <laughs> As a, I, I think that it's, I think like this tweet that I just read through, um, the tweet where the guy was talking about this a minute ago, um, I'll go back, this Steph, Stefan Huber guy, this right here is what I feel like we're, I feel like we are a coiled spring and that at some point the, the, the clouds are just going to all of a sudden be gone. And I think that it could happen imminently it could happen at any minute any day it could happen this week next week i don't think it's way out into the future i think that this i, I mean that part of the reason i go back and i find all these videos all these sec videos and all this stuff is to keep illustrating the absurdity because 
they need to feel that pressure. They need to feel that pressure because they know everybody involved in this knows that it, that what's been done and the way it was done is completely wrong. It doesn't make any sense, and it's picking winners and losers. It, you can't. You, we can't live. It, we can't ha- live in a in a regulatory system where nothing makes any sense to anyone. Nobody can. Nobody. No businesses can function, and you and you're certainly not going to maintain any kind of status at, of of a world superpower if your regulatory bodies are not giving any kind of clear signals for how companies can be created and how how they can build i mean th- this is crazy and it reeks of something awful and for that reason i'm it's so confident that it goes away because it doesn't make any sense and it never has anytime it's something just doesn't make sense at some point Everything has to be lined up into some kind of reason, and there's no reason right now in this SEC thing. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button and tell your friends and family that I just have this feeling today. As something combine everything and the way this green thing's lining up with what the David Schwartz tweet and what some of these people are saying and the absurdity of what's going on. I have this gut feeling right now. Something, something's about to go off. Thanks for listening.